Since 2017, there have been nine major hurricanes that have made landfall on the United States Gulf of Mexico coastline, and as of the recording of this video, there is a tenth on the way. So what is it about this body of water that just seems to supercharge hurricanes? Today, we're going to take a closer look at the Gulf of Mexico and what makes it a hurricane factory. First, let's take a look at these nine hurricanes. Harvey. Irma. Michael. Lara. Zeta. Ida. Ian. Idalia. Helene. All of these storms made landfall as a Category 3 or higher along the Gulf Coast shoreline. Of these nine storms, two of them entered the Gulf as a major hurricane already. The other seven underwent a process known as rapid intensification. The standard definition for RI is an increase of sustained winds of the hurricane by 30 knots in a 24 hour time frame. Granted, this is only the threshold, and in the case of a lot of these Gulf storms, they far surpass this barrier for rapid intensification. Harvey, for example, crossed the Yucatan Peninsula, barely surviving just to reform as a tropical storm once entering the Gulf. 48 hours later, it was a Category 4 hurricane, with an 85 mile per hour increase to its sustained winds, and its pressure had dropped 66 millibars in that span. Just over a year later, on the late afternoon of October 8, 2018, Hurricane Michael entered the Gulf as a high-end Category 1. 48 hours later, it was making landfall as a Category 5 in Florida, 75 mile per hour stronger and 58 millibars lower in pressure, making it the first landfall in Category 5 in the US since Hurricane Andrew in 1992. Even more shocking than Harvey and Michael were Hurricanes Laura, Adalia, and Ida. Both Adalia and Laura increased their sustained winds by 45 miles per hour in a 24 hour time span, while Ida increased its sustained winds by a whopping 65 miles per hour in a 24 hour span. The Gulf of Mexico lends itself to being the ideal body of water to support rapid intensification. Now, why is that? The geography of the Gulf is the first major contributor. The majority of it is quite shallow, with large shelves emanating from the Floridian and Yucatan peninsulas, as well as the Texas and Louisiana coasts. Simultaneously, within the water itself is the Loop Current, a strong ocean current which flows from between the Yucatan and Cuba, through the Gulf, and back around the gap of Florida and Cuba. These geographical factors make this body of water extremely efficient at storing latent heat. It is no secret that the primary ingredient to foster hurricane development is warm water. Out over the open ocean, as tropical cyclones move over warm sea surface temperatures, they will deplete that surface water of its latent heat. Vast quantities of cooler water replace the depleted surface water that the tropical cyclone utilized for its growth. As the storm progresses, it leaves a wake of cooler surface ocean temperatures behind it, limiting the development of future storms in the short term as the latent heat takes time to replenish. Meanwhile in the Gulf of Mexico, it's a different story. The shallow depth of the Gulf means that the water is significantly more saturated with latent heat. There is not the extreme quantities of cooler water that the open ocean possesses. There is a constant resupply of heat saturated water into the Gulf via the loop current as it is the primary source of latent heat for the Gulf. Hurricanes that ultimately enter into the Gulf of Mexico are tapping into an energy source unlike any other in the Atlantic. Moreover, the Gulf is able to recover significantly quicker than that of the open ocean. However, it is important to note that the atmosphere above has to cooperate in order to support rapid intensification. The two main things that combat RI are strong wind shear or dry air aloft. Strong wind shear can disrupt the organization of developing storms, preventing the effective lift of air parcels. In that same vein, dry air aloft can cool the core of a hurricane, preventing effective lift or creating an inversion strong enough to prevent convection altogether. Nonetheless, even if some dry air or shear is aloft, the Gulf's effect can overcome these factors and still support a rapidly intensifying storm. To add to an already dire situation, the Gulf is not getting any cooler. 
Surface sea temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are at record highs, with an average temperature anomaly of 1 degree Celsius higher than the baseline climatological period. The sharpest rate of increase has been within the past decade. While that does not sound like a lot, that is twice as much compared to the greater Atlantic at the same latitude. Obviously, correlation does not equal causation, but the faster than global average increase of surface sea temperatures within the Gulf of Mexico is a factor to be considered with the intensification of hurricanes. As of the recording of this video, Hurricane Milton is currently a Category 5 hurricane with a central pressure of 905 millibars and sustained winds of 180 miles per hour. Only three previous hurricanes have ever achieved that low of a pressure within the Gulf of Mexico. Katrina, Rita, and Allen. Mid-edit Ethan here, just wanted to update this. Milton ended up going down to 897 millibars, so that dethrones both Katrina and Allen. Rita is the only storm that has ever been stronger in the Gulf of Mexico when it comes to terms of pressure. Anywho. Just 24 hours ago, Milton had sustained winds of 85 miles per hour and a central pressure of 985 millibars. Milton is now the second fastest hurricane ever in the Atlantic Basin to go from category one to five, doing so in just 18 hours. The only hurricane to do it faster was Hurricane Wilma. Current forecasts have Milton making landfall along Florida's Gulf Coast in the next couple of days here as a major hurricane. That would make it the 10th major hurricane to make landfall along the Gulf Coast within the past seven years. While there's not much that we can do to the storm ourselves, there is plenty that we can do to be prepared if you're in the path. Depending on when you're watching this video, you may know the full extent of what Milton has brought to the Florida coast. Right now, I do not, and I can only imagine that it's not going to be good. Hurricane Helene was not even two weeks ago, and its inland impacts in Lower Appalachia were simply unprecedented. I can only imagine what Milton is going to bring to the Florida coast in a couple of days time. I'm not really sure how to end this video other than please go to the National Hurricane Center for the best up-to-date forecast information and be sure to heave local warnings and evacuation orders. They are meant to save your life when it comes to the impacts of such a strong storm. As always everyone, be prepared and stay safe out there when it comes to severe weather.